One of my viewers is uh, trying to decide as to whether they're going to buy a Harbor Freight 10-inch sable saw or the Ryobi 10-inch sable saw, the RTS 21G, and asked if I would make a video comparing these two uh, to help him to make that decision. So that's what this, this video is all about. Let's take a look at the accessories that come with these two saws. Of course, the Ryobi does come with a fence. It does come with a standard push stick. You also have the anti-kickback paws, riving knife, 24 tooth blade, saw protective cover, and it does come with a miter gauge. Uh, miter gauge is about four inches longer than the uh, Harbor Freight, and I found it to be a little bit more stable. Of course, this is a T-Track miter gauge. And this also comes with, I'm gonna call it a kind of a uh, off-feed stand or it's not a table but I'll, I'll show you the support so I'd call it let's say an off-feed support and then it does come with a collapsible stand which is very conveniently stored on the back so that is the Ryobi in terms of accessories of course the Harbor Freight does come with a fence does come with a pushback uh, stick or push stick it also comes with the anti-kickback paws, riving knife. I think this is a 30 tooth carbide blade that comes with it. Uh, does come with a uh, safety blade cover and then it does have the uh, miter gauge. Again I found this miter gauge to be a little bit more sloppy than the one that uh, comes with the Ryobi. Let's take a look at the specifications on these two saws. First let's look at the Harbor Freight the most recent or most current model out there that you can get online is the 63118. That happens to be red instead of the blue that you see here. That one is 15 amps. It'll cut at zero bevel, three inches. At 45 degree bevel, it'll do about two and a half inches. RPMs are roughly 4,800. Weight is right in at about 45 pounds. Rip left on the Harbor Freight is 12 and 1 8. Rip right is 9 and 3 quarters. It does accept a Daydo and it does have a separate Daydo insert for that. Uh, the warranty is 90 days. The table size is 26 by 19. And this one right now online retails for about $139 and comes with a metal stand that is not collapsible. Okay. So that is the Harbor Freight 63118 red color online. Let's look at the Ryobi. This is the RTS 21G. Uh, it carries 15 amps. At zero bevel, it's going to cut three inches. At 45 degree bevel, you're going to get about two and a half inches out of it. The RPMs are 5,000. Rip left is 12 inches. Rip right is 27 inches, and I'm going to show you more about that later on. I actually was able to extend it out a little bit further and get 29 and three quarters. It does say it that takes dado, but there is no dado insert, so you're going to have to buy that separately. So the the one that you see there, I don't think is going to take dado, uh, the insert. The warranty is a three-year limited warranty. The table size without the extensions is 34 by 19. Now, when I went back and measured with the right-hand extension and then the extension on the back side, uh, it ended up being 45 and a half by 30 inches. So if you look at it that way, it is much larger. Uh, the weight is uh, 50 pounds, probably a little bit more with a stand. And the uh, price on this one as of this morning was $199. Next, let's look at the tabletops for both of these saws. The Harbor Freight is brushed aluminum does have some fluting and some slots and of course this is a T-slot for the miter gauge uh, as you can see here the scale is a little bit small smaller than the one you're going to see in the Ryobi here in just a moment a little bit more difficult to read you got to be close up enough to read it and then there's reading it on the actual fence itself okay if we come over here to the Ryobi the Ryobi has some kind of coating on the top I took a magnet to both of these tabletops and neither one of them is made out of steel. I'm guessing that underneath this coating it's aluminum. Then looking at the scale for the Ryobi, let's see if I can get that into focus for you. There you go. 
much easier to read, brighter colors, larger, larger numbers, and then you've got a scale for both left and right, which are very easy to read, and then the little gauge here for the fence is uh, very easy to read. I would say if I had to pick one in terms of accuracy, the Ryobi would be a little bit more accurate, especially since it's easy to read. Once I lined it up and set it up, it was dead on. So when that says 14 inches right there, uh, and it's zeroed out right here, it's dead on 14 inches. Important feature of any table saw is the fence. So let's look at the fences on uh, both of these two saws. On the Harbor Freight, as you can see here, it's a very simple mechanism. It will come out flush to the right to this distance, but if you try to take the fence and flush it to this edge, it doesn't properly align. Now, when you uh, press down the handle and set it up, it comes pretty close to being perpendicular to the blade, but uh, I would always double check. I would double check on either one of these two saws, but this one tends to be a little bit loose, or I would say a little bit squirrely. If we come over here to the Ryobi, I found this one to be a little bit more positive in terms of locking. At the same time when I locked it down, it did seem to be better at staying parallel to the blade or parallel to the miter tracks. The mechanism is smooth, and as you see right here, I was able to bring it out so it's flush all the way to the right hand side, which adds about another two and three quarters inches. So when you extend this uh, extension out all the way, this tape and you flush this out all the way to the right, like I've done here, you get about 29 and three quarters inches from the blade in terms of your overall rip capacity. And I'll show you more about that in uh, just a little bit. But that's the defenses for both of these two saws. There are a number of features found on the Ryobi table saw which are not found on the Harbor Freight. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one is rip capacity. As I mentioned earlier, the manual says 27 inches with the extension all the way out. When I take the uh, fence and flush it all the way to the right hand side of the extension, I'm getting 29 and three quarters of an inch. Also, I found this to be pretty stable. I thought this smaller tubing would not be very strong and be kind of wobbly, but they found a kind of tubing that's strong enough to keep it from wobbling. So I don't know that I'd put a lot of weight on here, but if uh, you had to cut uh, four by eight sheets of three quarter inch plywood, I don't think this extension would have a hard time handling it. Another difference in this saw is this off-feed extension that you see here. This takes it out to about 11 inches, so this gives you about 11 inches more of stability before your workpiece is going to have a tendency to lose its center of gravity off the uh, table saw. So this is a very, very nice extension to have, and they've done a good job with it. And again, this is the same tubing that's used for the uh, right-hand extension. It's, it's strong enough to hold a load. And again, I don't know that I would put a big load on it, but it does make it a lot easier instead of having to have an off-feed table or having roller stands like you've seen in my other videos. You, all you have to do is pull this out. And this slides back nice and flush for a compact storage. Let's take a look at the onboard storage for the Ryobi. On the right-hand extension is the easy storage for your push stick, and that locks into place. Underneath there, you're going to see the two wrenches necessary to change out the saw blade. And then you've got your fence right there. You're going to come around the back side and using straps with kind of Velcro and some buckles, that's your collapsible stand, which I'll talk more about in a minute. And then on the right hand side, naturally, is storage for your miter gauge. And then you're going to have to use some kind of twist tie to tie this up. Uh, there's no onboard storage for your cord, so that just kind of dangles loose. You'll have to find another way to manage that. One thing I do like about this saw is the handholds on both sides. So on the other side, the right hand side, and on the left hand side where we're at right now, there's some very convenient handholds to make it easier to pick this up and move it around. Neither of these two saws have storage for either the blade guard or for the anti-kickback paws. The controls on the front of the Ryobi are very convenient easy to read, easy to understand, and if you look at my video on how to get the most out of your 10-inch uh, table saw, you'll see how I use this. So this is 
pretty simple and straightforward for adjusting the height and the angle or the bevel of your blade. When you receive your Ryobi in the packaging, you'll notice that this extension is turned upside down and then stored over on this side. So theoretically you could do that if you had a space constraint for your table saw, but if you do that, you're going to have to take this little gauge right there, this little uh, gauge piece, and this little end cap that keeps it from running all the way through the slot. You're going to have to take that off each time you do that. So space is a consideration, and you need to take this off and flip it on the other side. You can store that underneath the left-hand side just as you found it when it, it, it was shipped to you. Let's take a look at the onboard storage for the Harbor Freight. On the right hand side you have storage for the uh, fence. On the back side there's no storage but there is a little port, if you can see that in there, for dust control. And when I flip this over and show you the under the hood you'll see that a little bit better. On the right hand side, or excuse me, on the left hand side is the room for the miter gauge. There's no onboard storage for the uh, cord. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, for both of these saws, there's no storage for either the blade guard or for the anti-kickback paws. There is no storage for either of the wrenches for changing out the saw blade or for the push stick. There are a number of holes, there's three holes if you can see them right there, that you could probably put some kind of hook in or put some bolts through to hold these on to the right hand side. I just hang them on my uh, shelving. This saw also comes with an arbor nut for the Daydo set, and this one does come with a Daydo insert for the tabletop, which does, this does not come with the Ryobi, so I imagine you're going to have to purpose, purchase that separately. So you can see that's a little bit wider to, uh, to accommodate a one half inch Daydo stack. The controls on the front are pretty simple and straightforward, very much like the Ryobi. So I'm not going to spend much time on that. Again, you can watch my other video. I'll put the link in the description below on how to use this. But uh, very simple and straightforward for changing your blade height as well as the bevel on your blade. Let's take a look inside of both of these saws from the top. The first thing I want you to note is on the blade insert, there's tabs on the back of the insert, but the front is held into place by two magnets that you see here, okay? And that's very convenient for popping it in and out. You also can see that the arbor has enough uh, length on it. You can uh, put on a stack of about a dado stack of about a half inch. I don't know that this inserts wide enough for a half inch stack. I suspect you're going to have to buy another one. And then there's the control for changing the height and or removing uh, the riving knife. That's very comfortable easy to get to, easy to see. So let's look at the Harbor Freight. Both of the inserts pop in and out, both front and back with tabs. That's the standard blade insert, and then there's the Daydo stack insert. Uh, there is the Arbor, and there is an Arbor nut that comes with this blade, so you can get a half inch Daydo stack in there. And then down there, let's see if I can get some light on this for you. Down there is the lever or control for the riving knife probably not as comfortable but it's still usable if you're not going to change a riving knife out or adjust it very often it's probably not a big deal but it is a little bit less less uh, comfortable than the one that you'll find in the Ryobi let's take a look under the hood of both these saws first uh, under the hood for the Harbor Freight so there you can see the blade and the Arbor and of course here's the motor but then there's a mechanism for changing the height or position of the blade in terms of height as well as bevel. On the back side you can see the dust control port which will give you a little bit of dust control but you notice there's slots on either side both left and right hand sides where an awful lot of dust can flow in and out so if you've got a good vacuum on there it may help you to some degree or another. And then there is, let me see if I can get a good angle on the riving knife, there you go. That's the control for setting the position or removing the riving knife. So that's under the hood for the Harbor Freight 
cable saw. Now let's take a look at the Ryobi. Of course, there's the blade, as well as the arbor. And as I showed you from the top, there's the orange control for either setting the height of the riving knife or to remove it altogether. And then there's the controlling mechanism for both the height as well as the bevel for your saw blade. So that's under the hood for the Ryobi. While I have the Ryobi upside down, let's take a look at the mechanism that helps control both the right hand side extension and the back extension. This is the rod that slides back and forth on the right hand extension and there's the locking mechanism right there. There's one in the front and one in the back. I'll show you in a second. And then there's the extension piece itself. Also another view of the handle that appears on both sides. Very easy to grip and hold. This one, because I've been manhandling both these saws, this one is considerably heavier than the uh, Harbor Freight. I'd say it's at least 10 pounds heavier, even though the specifications don't indicate that. So this is the rod that controls or helps control this mechanism right here, which is the off-feed uh, support that I showed you earlier on. So that's a mechanism right there that holds it in place. And of course, this is the locking mechanism on the back side for the right hand extension. So let's look at this from the other side. Same thing on the other side here for that rear off feet extension. And then there again is your handle for lifting this particular saw. As I showed you earlier, the Ryobi does come with a collapsible stand that does store on the back. In order to set it into place, all you have to do is turn these little knobs into place line them up with the slots and then uh, lock it into place. Nice sturdy little stand, lightweight, but uh, by the time you add this to the Ryobi, I'm guessing you're looking at about 60 pounds. It's pretty hefty. So if you have a need to take the stand off, collapse it, move this around, make it portable, then this little stand works out rather well. Unfortunately, I don't have the stand for the Harbor Freight. It is metal and it is fixed in terms of size. It does not collapse and it is assumed you're going to bolt it into place using the holes that you see there and you're going to store your saw on that stand most of the time. So looking at these two table saws, if you're just going to be doing, doing smaller rip cuts and uh, cross cuts and you're not going to be doing big sheets of plywood or other, other types of materials, and you're not going to be very portable, then the Harbor Freight is roughly $60 less, not including coupons, not including any specials. Uh, it's going to save you about $60. Bucks. But if you believe you're going to be ripping larger pieces of, say, plywood, three-quarter inch plywood, uh, four by eight sheets, something like that, then the extensions on the right-hand side and on the back are going to make a big difference. Also, if you believe you need to be more portable or you're limited in terms of storage space and you've got to collapse things to put them away, then the Ryobi is probably the way to go, even though it's about $60 more in terms of uh, pricing. Well, I hope you found this video uh, useful. If you have, uh, please press like. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And as always, good luck on your projects. Mm -hmm.